We're rolling. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Extra Time with me, Liam Horobin. I know we're late this week, but honestly, at this point, why do I even? Why do I even have a schedule? I'm going to record it when I can. And today is on Saturday, Saturday, July 15th. I am now a week away from being in London, then in Manchester, then in Hull, then Paris, and then back to London, and then back here to Edmonton. Nice little three-week trip. So like we spoke about previous episodes, I don't know if it was the last one or maybe the one before, but Brett Holden will be taking over the host duties. Very thankful for Brett for doing that. So shout out to Brett. Great guy too. You guys are going to you guys are gonna love him. He, uh, he brings a lot of laughs, a lot of character, Brett. Good man. So he'll, uh, he'll kind of be taking you through the World Cup, the Women's World Cup, which is happening in Australia and New Zealand. I'm not sure what the time difference is actually from England, but if you're in Canada, I know the first games kind of start at eight o'clock, I believe, our time, mountain time, that is. Some of them go till early in the morning, so you'll catch some, but Canada do play on Thursday evening, I believe. That's a 7.30 kickoff. So they play Nigeria, be able to see the girls, Christine Sinclair, Julia Grosso, Grosso, I believe that's how you say her name. A lot of good players. Canada should do well at this tournament. Could they win? Why not? They're the Olympic gold medalists from the 20, what was it, Tokyo, I believe the last Olympics was. The Olympics is always a fun event too. I love the Olympics. So anyway, Women's World Cup coming up, 90th minute, just overall have all that covered. Kicked back will be going. Waz will be making his TikToks. It'll be great. It'll be a great time, but yes, welcome to Extra Time with me, Liam Horbin, presented by Betway 19 Plus. Please bet responsibly as always. Ontario only two. Unless you live in the US, and I'm sure you can gamble in the US with Betway too, or wherever else you're listening. So yes, welcome again. Big, big news today in the Premier League. Something that we all knew was going to happen, but finally got confirmed today. Declan Rice is a gunner. Is he a goner? We'll wait and see. But for now, Declan Rice is a member of Arsenal FC. And look, we knew this was going to happen for a while, didn't we? It was a record transfer fee, I believe, one hundred and thirty-five million was the final, the final count. One hundred and thirty-seven million, according to that's Bleacher Report football. That's in dollars or whatever that is in pounds. Most expensive English football player ever. Jude Bellingham just had that record when he went to Real Madrid. Harry Maguire's had that record. I don't think Jaden Sancho has had the record, but I think he's fourth or fifth on the list. Jack Grealish held it. It's uh, it's quite the list. I'm going to see if I can pull it up here and, and let's have a quick peek through and see if, you know, it's it's worth it, I guess you could say. I saw this one on Instagram, but I, I think it is. I mean, Declan Rice is... I've said this on this show before. I think Declan Rice has been England's best player at the last World Cup, probably, and maybe even the Euros before that. If not the best, he's a top three participant. Every time he puts on that England shirt with the three lions on it, and he's I love him watching him play football. He makes defensive midfielder look like an entertaining position to play, which is something not every football player in that position can do. And I think that's why he's he's special. So Declan Rice, and another thing too is, I'm glad he just didn't go to City. I'm glad he, he um, how do you say it, ran the risk, I suppose you could say, of going to an Arsenal instead of instead of going out and playing for a City, who, again, probably will go and win the league. We'll talk about that a little later on in the show. But it took a bit more of a challenge. And I mean, you look at some of the business Arsenal have done in, in 2023, Jorginho is a pretty decent signing from Chelsea, a good depth player. Trossard's another good player they got from Brighton. Kai Havertz, I've said it, might be the transfer of the summer. We'll see. Obviously, that's got some time to play out, but I do believe in that one. Declan Rice now as well, and there's a few other guys in there. A two of the also signed Saliba to an extension. They've done a fantastic job, Edu and Mikel Arteta, of getting Arsenal in the right direction. Now, one thing I, I was thinking of when the season ended is they need to strengthen the squad for two reasons. One, so they can compete in the Premier League again. But two, because now they're going to have Champions League football back in back at the Emirates Stadium for the first time in however long. 
and they're going to need a stronger team. And, and they've gone out and they've done a fantastic job of doing that. Uh, Timbo was the other one they just got from Ajax, who's a great young defender. So now three of their defenders are Timbo, Saliba, and Gabriel. Now, you may remember as the season kind of went on, injuries started to plague Arsenal a little bit. And that's when Saliba left the squad for through injury. And then Rob Holden was the replacement. So now you have... A, a Yuri Timber in there and it just makes your team so much better. And that's why City have been able to thrive for so long is you look at their back line, you have John Stones and Ruben Diaz. It's like, okay, well, if Diaz goes down, who are we going to put in? Well, we got Nathan Naki. And then you got Janji, I believe is how you say his name. You know, I'm not a name guy. And then also there's uh, Laporte as well. And that's squad depth, isn't it? And it's, it's good. And it takes a while to get there. And to City's credit, they've, They've built it over time and Arsenal is, is trending in that direction. So I really like what Arsenal have done this far. And I think people who have wrote them off to kind of fall out of even the top four next season are completely wrong. Completely wrong. Arsenal will push for a title next season. I think it'll be a three-horse race, three horse race for the title next season in England. We'll get into that a little bit later on because I'm going to do the back half of my predictions for the season like we did last week. So I just want to read out quickly. Here's a top 10 most expensive players to go this summer. You got Declan Rice, 137 million. This is all in dollars, by the way. I do live in Canada, so it doesn't come up in pounds. Jude Bellingham, 116. Kai Havertz, 79 million. Uh, I always going to butcher this guy's name from who Liverpool just got from Leipzig. I don't know. You guys know who he is. The Hungarian guy, 79 million. I'm not going to screw that for myself. Mason Mount. I went to radio school. And they always said, if you don't know how to say something on the radio, don't say it. So there you go. I'm not saying it. Look him up yourself. I'll describe him to you. Handsome, young midfielder from Hungary who played for Leipzig and just signed for Liverpool for 79 million. You know his name? Send me the pronunciation. It's like Kravaskalia. It took me months. Months to learn that one. Sandro Tonali went to Newcastle, 71 million. And Cuckoo to Chelsea for 67 yeah, there's a couple of names on it. Like Ruben, Ruben Neves as well was another one that went to obviously the Saudi Arabian League and we'll see what happens there. Now there's also this Jordan Henderson stuff that's coming out about the Saudi Arabian League and Fabinho also. And I guess that kind of leads into to where I want to go on the show today. And that's finishing up our final 10 team predictions in the Premier League. So last week we finished up on Fulham, I believe. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we finished on Fulham. I said that Mitrovic would bang home 20 goals. So next up would be Liverpool. Now, this is kind of working a little bit more in my favor than I expected when I wrote down all these notes, but I don't think Liverpool will get in the Champions League again next season. I actually think the top four will stay pretty much the same. I think they'll probably be, probably be, there's a limo outside my house. I wonder who's that for. I think the top four will be a bit more of a push. Like I think teams like Liverpool, for example, will obviously push really hard on Newcastle. It's going to be Newcastle, Liverpool. That's kind of my point. But there'll be a big challenge for it. I do think the top three teams will be kind of locked in there. But I think Liverpool will finish fifth again. I think the fact that Henderson and Fabinho could be leaving. I know they're kind of at the end of their careers and there's still time to obviously to rebuild and add some more guys. But the issue they had last season was lack of depth. And I think losing two pieces after you add the depth and adding a guy like McAllister just isn't going to help the cause in Liverpool. We'll see. A lot of things can happen, right? Like... Uh, Luis Diaz is going to be healthy. Jota is going to be healthy. Uh, Darwin Nunes, I would imagine, is a better second half of the season. Sorry, second half, second season, not second half of the season. Second half of the season actually wasn't too bad. Once he stopped headbutting people, he really seemed to turn his uh, turn his season around in Darwin Nunes. But we'll see. I don't know. Liverpool just feel like a team that almost needs to freshen things up a little bit in the sense of like that core has really been around for a, for a while now a, a van van dyke and henderson i suppose being in that group as well you also lose a james milner who brought some leadership to the squad salah obviously Firmino has moved on sadio mane who apparently Bayern munich just don't want anymore is is moving on as well so just an interesting little group i'm not fully convinced liverpool can climb back into the into the top four. I think people seem to forget 
what happened to Arsenal and United for kind of a few years there, right? Where And even Liverpool a little bit before that, where you fall out of that top group and then the rest of them just keep on progressing and, and going. And I understand the name value is there, but it's not easy just to bounce back after a disappointing season and just get right back into the swing of things. like Because teams, players aren't going to want to go there as much as, as you maybe thought they would because you don't have that Champions League football. Instead, maybe they will go to to a Newcastle or United and, instead or, or City, of course, who are just an elite football team. That's kind of my thought on, on Liverpool. So my final prediction is Liverpool will not get Champions League football again next season. Moving on. To I think what will be everybody's new favorite team in the Premier League, Luton Town. What will Luton be next season? It's hard to say, really. I think I think they're going to struggle a lot. They haven't made a ton of signings yet in the Premier League to like with their winners' money. There's also the 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 factor of the stadium. <laughs> they had to postpone apparently their first home game or put in an appeal to get it moved maybe a week or so because the stadium's under renovations. So when you factor that in and just the squad depth, like right now, here's the players they've signed on July 15th. Chong, who was on loan, a former Manchester United Academy player, was on loan recently at Birmingham, I believe he was with. Madge Jewel Anderson, who is a centre-back, 25 years old, plays for Bar- played for Barnsley in League One last season. Now, I remember watching Anderson a few times when Bolton would play them. He is actually a pretty solid player. I don't know if making a jump from League One to the Premier League is exactly a great idea, but we'll see. And then they signed uh, a young another right winger from Rotherham, whose name I am not going to try and pronounce because I don't want to disrespect him and myself. Oh, Jembe, I believe is how you say the last name. Either way, not really any stars standing out. And I think that's something that's going to plague Luton quite a bit. I think they can stay up purely off team spirit. I think the fans are really going to get behind them. And honestly, we've seen a lot of these teams who have, who have come up through the playoffs the last few years, like Brentford, Nottingham Forest, being able to find a way to, to survive in the Premier League and the first season just... Through obviously like Nottingham Forest took a different approach in signing a ton of players. Brentford got uh, the obviously Christian Eriksen. Like it's about getting your lucky bounces. Maybe someone just takes off on on Luton and they can get going. I think Carlton Morris, I believe, was their main striker who got twenty goals for them last season in the Championship. Can he find his inner Ivan Tony Callum Wilson player who? who comes up to the championship and is able to score a ton of goals. The difference is, I think those guys were maybe a little bit younger. Charlton, uh, sorry, Carlton Morris is, I believe, a 28-year-old striker. We'll see. We'll see if he's able to find his foot in a little bit. But for now, I think Luton will stay up, mostly because I think the three teams that I'm predicting will go down are just a little bit weaker. And I could potentially be weaker. One of them is really banking on a lot of players leaving, which is Crystal Palace, which you spoke about. But yeah, for now, I'll say Luton stay up by the skin of their teeth. And by the skin, I mean like they're going to be dangling from that last tooth, holding on all however many people are in that club. And I'll be hanging on. But quad, quality of the squad has got to be better. Manchester City... I mean, is there anything other to predict than they'll probably win the league again? See, the thing is about City, uh, sorry, about the Premier League and City, I suppose, is, yeah, I know they win every year, but I just feel like they're not running away with it like they they possibly could, I suppose, or like other teams do in other leagues. I think they're going to get pushed really hard this season again. I think Arsenal got stronger. I think United again a little bit stronger, who I guess we can just kind of merge them, the two of them together, which I'm sure United and City fans won't like. But either way, I think City will get pushed really, really hard by Arsenal and United. And United will be interesting if they can get Onana. Obviously, David De Gea is gone now and a fresh face in there. Fits into Van, uh, not Van Dijk, what's the manager called? Ten Hogs system a little bit more. I think, I think United are going to be damn good this year. I really do. They, Mason Mount, I love that signing. People are like, whoa, he's not that good. He only has two assists from open play. So, yeah, but he is good. 
he's a good football player. He's a bit underwhelming. I think you could say. I think that's a fair evaluation of Mason Mount, but still brings a lot to the game. He's a smart football player with good technical skills. Can score goals here and there. And seems like a good guy as well. And I think United the last few years have struggled to find good people to keep that team morale up. And I like what United have done. I like the squad. They obviously need that goalkeeper, Dean Henderson and Tom Heaton isn't a good duo to go into the season with. You could probably go into it with Dean Henderson. Probably. Do you want to, if you want to compete for the league? No. I'm surprised the the rumors around Harry Maguire have uh, kind of died off. You haven't heard a lot about him. There's rumors of Tottenham maybe pursuing him, but nothing much there. But the good news for United is a lot of guys are staying. And I think sometimes the continuity of having regular faces when you're progressing your team is good. Like I know I just said Liverpool's players have maybe been around for too long, some of the core, but they're kind of at the end of their peak, it seems like. Well, United is like, okay, they're kind of on the up again. So my prediction is Manchester United will push very hard for the title again next season. Could they finish second? I would not be shocked. If, if someone else won the Premier League, I would not be surprised either. I think the Premier League is in a very, very good spot. It's like, I think there's three teams right now that can compete for the league. And that would be Arsenal, City, United. And then I think there's, let's say five. I'll say five, six. So, okay, one, two, three. I'll say six teams. One, two, three, four, five teams that can compete for Champions League if everything kind of hits. So I think Newcastle can compete, Liverpool, Aston Villa could, and then Tottenham and Chelsea. Chelsea, I think, are the fifth unlikeliest. And then the rest, like Brighton are a very good team. Brentford are a good team. West Ham just won the Europa Conference League. You know, all these other teams in there too. Like, what are Burnley going to be? Is I think this is a really, really exciting time to be a Premier League football fan and something... I'm like, I'm really looking forward to the season and, and football started obviously like United and, and Leeds just had a match the other day, didn't they? And when I'm in England, I'm going to go watch Bolton versus Everton. So that'll be fun. Next one, Newcastle secure Champions League again. They got a good squad. The thing that's going to be difficult for them is playing in the Champions League now. They have European football to contend with where last season they... They didn't, right? They did well in cup competitions. I think it was the League Cup they got to the final in. Had a very, very good season overall. I'm very happy to see Newcastle fans happy again and able to to watch some special football because that club has gone through the shitter. But it's a it's an amazing club and, and the fan base is fantastic. The stadium's fantastic. Some absolute legends of the game have gone through there. Alan Shearer, a very memorable Premier League memory for me was when Kieran Dyer and Lee Bowyer Four on the pitch at St. James's Cup Park. And they were on the same team. So good for them. That was big. But I think Newcastle will compete again for Champions League. And I think they'll get it. Obviously, Sandro Tonali is a fantastic signing for them. And we'll see what else they kind of do. But I think Anthony Gordon will turn his season around a little bit. Obviously, just had a great under-21s with England, who didn't allow a goal. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I said James Trafford was elite? Some people got to listen to me. Although everyone watched that video and liked it. So thank you very much. So there you go. Newcastle back in the Champions League. Good squad. Eddie Howe's great manager. Nottingham Forest to keep it moving. They'll be in a relegation battle. They'll probably finish 15th, 16th again. I like the squad. I like the team. Steve Cooper's a good manager. I just don't I just don't know if they have enough to, to get themselves up. I think the highest they could finish is probably 13th. They're not a top half of the table team yet, but... Maybe they can be the surprise team, but I, I want to see a little bit more. They really need to find that striker who can bang home 15, 20 goals a season for them, which obviously are very difficult to come by. But Brennan Johnson's a good player. Um, I like him a lot. There's there's good good pieces in Nottingham for, for Forrest to, to keep progressing and to stay in the Premier League, which I think for them is, you know, something they're going to want to to be doing for a long time. They probably need a goalie is Wayne Hennessy. Wayne Hennessy is good, but he's no Kyla, Kayla Navas. Even Dean Henderson, is he as good as Dean Henderson? I don't know. Experienced at least. I like a lot of the players on the team though. They got they got a good squad, a good squad of experienced guys. Morgan Gibbs White is an absolute beast as well. So we'll see. To, um, Awani, 
their striker, obviously. I know he just said he need 15, 20 goals. He came up for them in, in clutch moments last season, a 10 on the year. If he can take another step, maybe the club can take a step, but he's good. I do like him. So we'll see. Forrest will stay up. I'm not really worried about that. I think the squad is a bit too good. I just wonder how much of a step they can make, you know? Uh, this one is fairly quick for me. Sheffield United, I think they'll finish last. I know last time they were in the Premier League, they had that good little run right before COVID hit. Then the next year, it kind of went down the drain. I think they might be the biggest or second biggest, Ipswich might be, the biggest gap between the points they had the year before to what they did a few years after. So, sorry, Sheffield United. You are down for me. Moving on to Tottenham, Europa League again. The squad, again, I don't think it's good enough to really compete for 38 games for a Champions League spot. Saying that, they don't have European football this season, so maybe that's something that helps them. Harry Kane's future is everything. If Harry Kane goes, they might not finish in the top half. Maybe that's extreme, but he is the hobby of that team. Did anyone else in that team score double-digit goals last season? I don't think they did. James Madison, great player. Great, great player. He'll be good for them, obviously. Can Son turn his season around? This new manager, look, he's good with Celtic, but how good is he? It's going to be a real test. I'm not sitting there doubting him. I'm just wondering, how good is he? We'll see. I'm intrigued. So Tottenham, Europa Conference League. West Ham United, Declan Rice, like we said, he's now gone. So how are they going to spend that money? Now, this kind of, this will change things, obviously, in the image of them. They're in the Europa League next season. So they'll be able to attract some good players. They've still got some good guys on there. Obviously, Jared Bowen's a great player. Uh, Lucas Paqueta, fantastic. Declan Rice, massive haul. But they probably could find some one and a half decent. Thomas uh, Sosek, great player too. I think David Moyes will get sacked, though. I think this season was big. A bit of overwhelming for West Ham. And there was rumors that he was going to get sacked before if they didn't win the Europa Conference League. So luckily they for themselves, they won. And for him, they won. So he got to keep his job. And I could see West Ham moving on from David Moyes this season. And last but not least, Wolves. Wolves will get relegated on the last game of the season. Ruben Neves is gone. And I just think they've been hanging on for a while now. They can't score goals. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it again this season. And I just wonder if the time has kind of run out on Wolves. They were a great run back in the day when they went on all the... What did they play that one season? 60-something champions, uh, European games. Quite amazing, really, what they were able to accomplish. But I think uh, I think Wolves will be done. So I'll actually give you my full Premier League table. Uh, how it can go and look this is obviously early there's a lot of stuff that can happen the season doesn't start for two months so i'll probably do another one later on but i wanted to get this out there so relegated i think will be sheffield united in 20th wolves 19th crystal palace 18th surviving luton forest everton in 14th, we have Bournemouth. I'm curious how they'll do under their new manager. West Ham, 13th. I just think that's underwhelming for West Ham. I think they should be one of those teams competing for European football consistently with the, the players they have, even without Declan Rice. Brentford, 12th. Fulham, 11th. Burnley, 10th, like I said in the first part of this. I think Burnley can be one of the surprise teams of the season. They can essentially be what Fulham were last year. Brighton ninth, fall off a little bit, unfortunately, but could have a very good run in the Europa League. Chelsea eighth, missing out on European football again. Tottenham seventh, Villa sixth, Liverpool fifth, Newcastle fourth, Arsenal third, United second, City first. So there you go. Maybe what you can do is head over to Betway and play some bets if you believe in me. One other thing I want to touch on quickly before we go is... um. I won't touch too much on it, but the Deli Alley thing obviously came out this week where he talks about his, his childhood, I guess, if that's what you even want to label it as. It doesn't sound like it was very nice from when he was 12 and younger. A bit sad to just hear all that stuff from a guy who is still is such an amazing football player. About 2018 World Cup, he was 
he was outstanding and the support on on social media was it was great to see for for Deli Ali who I think everyone just wants to see back in back in form even before this interview came out he is a very likable football player and someone who's entertaining to watch so I guess my point of it is is like if you got you know if something is bothering you or you 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 know it could be anything like don't be afraid to to tell people it's always easier said than done but it's better out than in so there you go we'll end on that but thank you everyone again for listening it's always appreciated if you see this on social media give it a little retweet we'll see you around thank you for betway as always for being our presenting partner 19 plus please bet responsibly and i will see you next week and then i am out of here Goodbye, everyone.